Welcome. In this video, we will look at the Carno map, and instead of looking at some of products uh, that we did uh, in prior example, uh, we will look at what is known as product of sum. So let's start first with a quick recap of KMAP with sum of products. Here is a truth table uh, with input variable ABC. So it's eight uh, rows on the truth table. The output is Y. Uh, this truth table uh, leads us to a Carno map, which is basically a 2D representation of that same truth table, right? So, so far, we have no new information in this Carno map. We uh, used uh, the largest grouping of ones. So in this particular case, we said, let's find the largest grouping of ones. And we found this group where the variable A does not change, B does not change. And in fact, for that green group, that uh, A is equal to 1, B is equal to 1, so we write A and B. Here's another group uh, where variable B does not change, C does not change, and we write that as B and C. And finally, here's a third group uh, where A is equal to 1, C is equal to 1, and we write that as A and C. So overall, we write the simplified Boolean expression for the, from this Carnot map uh, as Y equals A and B or B and C, or A and C. And notice that the product, it looks like a bunch of products that are added together, hence the term sum of products, right? In order to do sum of products, so here's the summary. So in order to do sum of products, we identified min terms. Min terms are basically collection of variables where the input variables led to an output of one. So those were the min terms, and we basically summed them or ordered them to get the Boolean expression. In the case of product of sums that we're interested in today, instead of looking at ones, we're going to look at zeros. Okay, so uh, we'll when we look at zeros, they are called max terms. So take a look at this variable right here. Output y is equal to zero. When we look at max term. Instead of looking at ones, we'll look at zeros. And when we look at zeros, we basically write the inputs that lead us to a zero in the following manner. So we'll look at this output zero, and we say y is equal to zero when a is equal to zero, b is equal to zero, c is equal to zero. And we write this as a or of these variables okay in the case of the min term in this case when we're doing min terms for sum of products and we were identifying let's say one we should write this as not a ended with b ended with c right so whenever there was a zero when we were doing min terms whenever there was a zero we used to write the variable with a bar over it, or the opposite of that variable. Wherever there was a one, we used to simply write the variable, and we used to end them. In the case of the max term, it's exactly the opposite. First, we're searching for output is equal to zero. So output is zero here. Instead of writing where, and then we write variable. If it's zero, we write the variable. If it's a one, we'll write the opposite of that variable, or a bar for that variable. So let's look at this particular one. Here, Output y is equal to 0, and it is 0 because a is 0, b is 0, c is not 0. So we write that as not c, like this. Okay. Uh, similarly, this is another max term, and that is when a is 0, b is not 0, C is zero. Finally, this max term belongs to an A is not zero, B is zero, and, or C is zero. So the difference between max term and min terms. Max terms tell you where the output is zero. Min terms tell us where the output is a one. When we write min terms, that's we're searching for output is equal to one. We write whenever we see a zero, we write the opposite of the variable or the complement of the variable or a variable with a bar over it. In the case of a max term where we're searching for a zero, 
Whenever we see the variable is equal to zero, we write that variable. If we see the variable equals one, we read it as variable is not zero, so we'll write the variable with a bar over it. Okay? All right, so let's go to the K map now. So here's the same uh, Carnot map as before. We've made absolutely no change here. Now we're searching for zeros. So we'll try to group, create a group of the largest grouping of zeros. Okay? Same rules apply as they did when we we're searching for the largest grouping of ones. The only difference now is that we're going to search for the largest grouping of zeros. So let's search for the largest grouping of zeros. And I find that the largest group of zero is actually just two zeros. So that's my first group that I found. Okay. In that green group that I have, the first cell right here, the first cell and the second cell are grouped together. The first cell has a equals zero, b is equal to zero, c is equal to zero, and the second cell has a equals zero, b is equal to zero, c equals one. So between cell one and two, c changes. A does not change and a is equal to zero. So we write that as a. b is equal to zero and b does not change. So we write that as or b. So essentially, these two cells right here are max terms from these two rows of the truth table. Okay. And when we combine them, we are left with A or B because A is equal to zero, B is equal to zero. Let's find another group. So I see a vertical group right there. In that case, A changes. So we don't have A as a group uh, variable. B does not change, C does not change. Both B as well as C are equal to zero. So we write that red group as B or C. Now, finally, I see this one remaining zero. Uh, as we saw, we can group this zero with this zero across the corners. So those two, so th that blue group has A is equal to zero, B changes, but C is equal to zero across those two blue groups. So we write that as A equals zero, so A or C. And the product of sum now basically says, notice how these look like sums now, right? A or B, B or C, A or C. So because of that plus, it looks like sums. So we have sums so far. Now we need to create the product of them. So the output Y is basically the end of these sums, okay? So the output Y is A or B and it together with B or C and it together with A or C. So that's a simplified product of some Boolean expression. Okay, We had the simplified sum of product expression right here, and now we have the simplified product of sums here. Okay, So that truth table led us to this sum of product expression and this product of sum expression. Now, are they equal? Well, we can use Boolean simplification rules to see if these two are, in fact, identical. So let's do that. Let's distribute. So we'll start out with so let's so we'll start out with this product of some expression, and we're going to distribute this B or C inside here. Okay, so we'll distribute that. So that's what we get: A and B, B and B. So B and B, A and C, B and C. We'll leave A or C. Uh, by itself for now. So now here, take a look. B and B, that's equal to B. So what we have is B and B just results in a B. Now I see a B here. I see a B here. I see a B here. Let's take B out there. So we, if we take factor B out, we have B ended with A. There's B ended with 1 here. So that is 1 here, right there and C, uh, C from this, and we have AC, we have AC right here. We'll leave that alone for now. Now what happens when something is ORed with a 1? It doesn't matter whether it's a 2 input OR or a 3 input OR, as long as one of the input is true, the output is true. So this overall A OR 1 OR C results in a 1. So what we have is B ended with 1, or AC ended with A or C. So B ended with 1 is simply B or AC ended with A or C. Now, just like before, we'll take A or C and we'll distribute it 
inside here. So let's to do B ended with A. So B ended with A. AC ended with A. B ended with C. And AC ended with C. Take a look here. A is ended with A. That's just A. C is ended with C. That's just C. So what this leads us to is BA, AC, BC, AC. Now I see AC here and I see AC here. A or A is simply A. So AC or AC is just going to be AC as well. So I have BA or AC or BC. So let's take a look here. So this expression right there and that expression right there. I see BA, I see AB. So they're identical. I see BC, I see BC. I see AC and I see AC here as well. So they're identical expressions. So we basically seen that we can go from a truth table to a Carnot map and either group ones to get the minimized sum of products or we can group the zeros to uh, get the minimized product of sum and here using boolean algebra we just showed that whatever we got for the minimized product of sums is in fact equivalent to what we would have gotten if we had done the minimized sum of products so that is uh, basically uh, 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 a video on showing how to use or how to group zeros to get a minimized product of sums.